Welcome to Didier Soulier podcast and video series of successful Midlands entrepreneurs. You can find me on Twitter at Didier GC Soulier. Uh, my website is www.thedronefilmcompany.com. And if you want to find me on iTunes podcast, uh, simply put my name, Didier Soulier, that's D I D I E R S O U L I E R. Or on YouTube for the video series, it's the same, Didier Soulier on YouTube. Uh, thank you for coming to the show and uh, let's get on with it. Uh, welcome to the second edition of uh, West Midland Successful Entrepreneur. Uh, today, my guest is uh, Tim Andrews. Uh, Tim, welcome to the show. Okay. Um, you are the uh, managing director of Hollywood Monster uh, for about 25 years. Is that, is that yeah, right? it's, yeah, it's 25 years yeah. to, to the, well, pretty much to the day. All right. So he's uh, one of the leaders of signage uh, signage company in the UK. Is that, yeah. is, that, is that right? Yeah. 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 You just uh, you won the best UK wide printing company as an award, um, and you were one of the main contrib- contractors for the London 2012. Like, as I can see, some of the some of the on your on your uh, on your wall here. Yeah. Is, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, we did. Uh, we carried a lot of the. We did a lot of the, the Coca Cola and McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, Visa. Brandings, uh, Visa as well. Yeah. Uh, so. All great names. Yeah, um, big names, yeah. And obviously yeah. that's quite fun at the moment with uh, Rio. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually happening as we speak. Have you got some some, uh, some, some jobs there as well? Uh, we haven't actually, no. Uh, I think with our products, you know, because it's so bulky, so large, yeah. um, you know, the transport makes it become okay. know, uh, cost prohibitive, really. Right. Um, so, um, and what happens with the, with the Olympics, predominantly they go around, you know, they use employ local trades okay. you know, and that's what's so good about the Olympics it's, yeah. uh, it's great for that local area so you guys quite benefited a lot when yeah the, we did yeah there's the over, over a million pounds worth wow. of uh, signage you know so for us it was great for our wow. business yeah, I bet, yeah. yeah. Um, apparently uh, you just landed a big contract with uh, McDonald's yeah. recently is that yeah. right yeah. that's uh, I mean it's, it's actually a three year contract to, right. to actually renew the internal graphics uh, we have do, been doing McDonald's work for, for some time now okay. actually um, but of course, McDonald's are, uh, are getting you know, a lot uh, bigger in, in the UK, sure. um, and they're, they're investing in larger sites, and of course, uh, they're needing our services more and more. So a good client to have on your yeah, on your books, superb, right? Yeah. yeah. Superb, yeah. Um, as I know that you're a Birmingham City um, Ladies Football Club uh, chairman. Is that yeah. is that right? Yeah, yeah, the CEO. Yeah. 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 And the chairman of Love Prem Charity. Is, yeah. that, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. Right. Um, so Birmingham City Ladies, first and foremost, uh, I used to be a sponsor uh, okay. for them, a shirt sponsor, mm-hmm. uh, for six years, right. and uh, got close to all the guys involved at the club, okay. uh, become part of their family really, mm-hmm. and uh, the opportunity came uh, beginning of the year for, for me to take over as CEO, um, you know, and the whole real, you know, the, the main objective for, for that is to, to, to expand the ladies, uh, yeah. it's on the back. We, we are now the, the fastest growing sport yeah we're doing well sport. Uh, we're certainly as a team mm-hmm. um, you know, there's, there's you know real real good opportunity for, for us as a, as a football club to to you know um, to monopolise or to okay. uh, to profit from the, the sport in general the yeah. way it's going expanding so much and Bowman City Ladies is well placed to uh, to do that um we are probably, I'd say, top four in the UK. Yeah, um, I thought you're doing very well, so aren't it's they? A, it's a bit of a sort of a hidden gem, really, of, yeah. of the city. Uh, something that you know, the girls uh, who, who like the game should be very proud of. Yeah, yeah, I think something to be proud of. Because, I mean, uh, um, if you compare to the football team, uh, men football team, they're not doing very well on the aren't they? So I think yeah, it's great well, for Birmingham, right? I think uh, not just Birmingham City men, but, but other, other local football teams yeah. as well, you know. Um, I think it's fair to say, based on cups and where we finished in the league yeah. over the last six year, it makes us that the most um, successful team locally. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, something we're, we're, we're quite proud of. So the uh, the awareness is kind of growing and on, on that side. You yeah, think like I say, um, ladies football in general is mm-hmm. is massively growing. Uh, participation uh, is the biggest the biggest sport right. uh, participation sport in the UK. Okay. Um, you know, and, and obviously Birmingham City Ladies is benefiting from that, you know, yeah. from the added attraction or the increased interaction. Um, something that, uh, 
yeah, we're quite, uh, quite proud, proud of. of. Sure, it should be. I think it's something to be proud of. Uh, you have a love for boats. I think you own one, right? I do. Or is, yeah. it, is it a boat or, or a yacht? Uh, it's yeah, not a yacht yet. Yeah, it's a motor yacht. Yeah, is it a motor yacht? Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, where did you go um, do this? It, um, somewhere in England or you got to yeah, go abroad? When I was uh, a young lad growing up, I always wanted a boat myself. Okay. Um, something that's sort of, sort of a passion that I had from an early on age. Yeah. Um, we used to do water skiing. And, you know, I really wanted to, you know, when I got my business and was in a position to be able to afford one, yeah. uh, I bought one. And over the years, Boat MV creeps in. You want the bigger one, you want the better one. Yes. Um, and, and, and I basically, uh, each each few years when I've been able to afford, I've swapped up. Yeah. You know, so 20, 20 years later, I, uh, I've got the boat that I actually set out to achieve, yeah. uh, or the similar boat. Yeah. Uh, of course, they didn't make it back in, you know, but the similar size boat, so that was always my dream. Yeah. Um, but I've still got that boat MV, I still want that next one up. So you got your eyes on something bigger now? I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, I looked at your website uh, yesterday and I couldn't have noticed that um, on the team page, everybody is holding a, a, a pint or a glass of wine. Is that, is that how it is in the, in the office? Um, uh, no, 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 it isn't. But I think really what's really important in any business is the team of people that's yeah. behind the company. And we like anybody, we like to socialize. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, wh when you have a, a team that get on together and socialize together, you know, it enables it to be creative. Yes. And, uh, I think you know, really what we wanted to try and do was to, to actually try and capture that team spirit yeah. within the business. I do. Um, and I think we've, uh, we've achieved yeah, it. No, yeah, I think it's quite a friendly setup. I think you, you may look like a, a bar kind of, kind of setup, and I think yeah, it does, yeah. does, does bring it. Yeah. Um, so where, do you, where are you originally from? From Birmingham? I am, yeah. yeah, yeah. Birmingham, born bread. bread. Mm -hmm. uh, grew up in a suburb called Hollywood. Hence yes, I've heard about it. I, I couldn't believe there was a suburb called Lime yeah. I was like, well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's certainly an area um, that's not that well known. Yeah. Uh, it's home to um, some of the members of Duran Duran, which, uh, no way. which is uh, another uh, another one of its claims to fame. Yes, of course. Um, yeah. And it's one that uh, when I grew up, I was supporting Duran Duran as a... As a they're a good band. As a, as a band, yeah. uh, and of course they're still going today. That's so, so awesome. Uh, as a child, um, what did you want to be in life? Like, what was your dream? Uh, I well, I always wanted to have my own business. Yes. Um, that that kind style. Yeah. As far as I mean, I I actually wanted to have my own business, but I also wanted to be a pop star. So yeah, everybody of course, wanted to be yeah, that one. Yeah. So early years, I wanted to be the next Duran Duran. Yes. Um, my art teacher at school was. Uh, was quite instrumental um, mm -hmm. to that to Duran Duran. Um, okay. So it, it was something that, that I really wanted to be. I couldn't I couldn't sing. I couldn't play the guitar. I tried, uh, but actually, what was the real passion was wanting to have my own business and to, yeah. you know, I've always wanted to excel in what I do right. um, and try and improve my lifestyle and, and you know and, and I've seen people in life that you know actually. If you really have got that desire and that drive yeah. to have your own business, you know you do get the benefits from it. Staying um, yeah. but of course it does, you know, take over your life and it becomes pretty much part of mm -hmm. part of your life. Um, but it's something that I've always wanted to do. Right. Um, wasn't really quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. Um, but be successful in that's somehow, right, yeah, somehow, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Um, I mean, you hero as a child. I mean, I'm guessing maybe uh, Duran Duran, maybe or like like a figure like you like like for me like it was Batman well, for, for many years but what well, was what sorry Batman uh, okay I'm yeah. bat always did Batman but um, what, what was it for you uh, as um, like a, a superior or just a figure that you knew um, yeah, yeah like, I mean Duran Duran was very much a, something that you wanted a shiny light in my in my younger days yeah um, in fact I named my boat after the pub that they started uh, called Rum Runner Okay. Um, yeah, so it's had a huge impact in my life, but um, in terms of people, obviously business people, mm -hmm. Richard Branson for one, yeah. Uh, yeah. has always had that, uh, you know, quite often use some of his quotes that I've heard. Yeah. Uh, one, ones that I think is most powerful is you look after your, your staff, your staff yeah. look after your clients. Very true. Yeah, right. something that you know, we're very much, uh, you know, uh, Focused on. subscribe to. Yeah. Um, but in terms of other people, I think 
I think that's it, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of any significance, I mean, there's been lots of people. Lots yeah, I mean, people, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and my mum, for instance, my mum mm-hmm. has been a massive drive and, and has fed me uh, a lot of a lot of my um, you know my values in yeah. life. Okay. Um, my my father has taught me, you know, hard work is is what gets you in, anywhere in life. Yeah. Nothing comes to you for nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you know, there's been many, many, many people who've influenced me, uh, both home and uh, further okay. afield. Um, I think, without a doubt, of course, everybody's parents are the ones that give the most. Uh, yeah. Uh, and my agree. parents have certainly given me an abundance of, uh, agree, of yeah, drive, yeah. and um, it's something I'm very grateful for. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, were you a college dropout, or uh, were you a good boy at school, or did you uh, um, did you kind of left? I did everything that I should. I was never the brightest in the class. Right. I certainly had to work mm-hmm. to uh, to get my grades. I was not one of these kids at school that don't bother revising and turn up and, and just, you know, yeah. get top grades. Uh, it's always come difficult to me, so I've always had to yeah. revise. Step up but that's one way. thing that I did do a lot of as a kid. Uh, yeah. Again, my mom used to keep saying. Yeah, you must revise. You must revise. Yeah. It was it was my mum that uh, that made me sit down and do it, and uh, and thankfully she did. Uh, I achieved the, the grades that I wanted to. Yeah. But I went to an apprenticeship, which did I think was you know quite a defining moment in my in my life, whereby obviously I was earning yeah not a huge wage, but I was earning some money, so it gave me that little bit of independence. Yeah. Um, but but really. The, the main benefit was it, it gave me the ability to look into the insights of different departments. Yes. And it was that again that made me realise actually to run your own business you, you need to know these different skills yes. and how these different departments sort of integrate and work together. I see. Um, so it was a really good grounding, uh, a real good start for me. Yeah. Um, any any books that, uh, that have marked you, that have kind of helped you, you know, um, like for um, your career? I'm not a huge reader of books. Okay. Always, uh, just don't don't have that. Um, well, I don't have the spare time for one. Yeah. But I also don't relax enough to, to sit down and read because yes. I find my mind wanders. And True. Um, I've read a few business books yeah. in my time. Um, one that springs out, "Who Moved My Cheese," which I've was, heard uh, about that. Yeah, I haven't read it it's yet. Very, it's very. It's only takes. It's, it's an hour, an hour and a half mm-hmm. to read. It's a very small book. Uh, but it's about change in mm-hmm. the business in the workplace. Yeah. You know, and how. Uh, how important to accept change mm-hmm. uh, in order to, to to sort of hunt down your nourishment, if you like. Yeah. Um, and I think that was one of the, what I liked about it, it was short and sweet, but it put it into a bit of a comical sort yeah. of situation. Okay. Um, but actually the meaning and the real meaning behind it is that, you know, you need to accept change to move on Yeah. and uh, and to achieve. You do, that's to right. Achieve. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Tony Robbins, J. Abraham, J. Abraham um, Brand, Brand Against the Machine, and the one obviously Richard Brunson and uh, Lord Sugar Autobiography. I mean, all these books have, have given me some ideas. Yeah. And um, yeah, I love, I love, I love reading. Yeah, well, my business partner has uh, has been on a course with Tony Robbins. As he did the, the seminar, yeah. like yeah, yeah in yeah, London, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not sure where he went to, but he did go to it. Uh, yeah. I've never actually been to it, but no. I know it, it sort of touched him and. Did it made him think about things. Did it have a good uh, impact? Hot yeah. rocks, I think, over the hot coals. Yes, they do that, yeah. 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 Was it a good impact? Yeah, you talked I think so, yeah. yeah. I quite often refers to it, yeah. It's something that you started to implement it, ideas in the, in the business? Um, yeah, I, mean, I think, I think well, the good thing about businesses and issues in businesses, doesn't matter what business you do, it all comes down to probably people and processes. And, yeah. and you know, and, and what he took away from it is enabled him to to sort of mould his way of thinking and put things into into perspective. Yeah, um, I mean, be a, being a, being open to uh, to learning new things. That's that's definitely that's one right, of the key, yeah. right? Yeah, very much, very much so. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, like the world doesn't own you anything, and I think that's totally right. You know, it, um, hard work does pay off. You know, yeah. and I think sometimes, I mean, I used to just like blame everybody around me, and then when you, it's, you have to believe that actually it starts from within, and a change will come outside. You know, it doesn't. Doesn't come from outside. That makes sense, you know. So yeah, I think uh, you know the influence outside is you know is the sort of the spark, but mm-hmm. the fire has got to be come from within, isn't it? Right. Um, you are daily routine, um, like when, when you wake up in the morning, um, do you go for a walk or what kind of food you eat. What do you tell yourself every day? For for example, like are you like keep a positive mind mindset uh, every day? Yeah, uh, positive. 
positivity is really important. Uh-huh. Uh, I think when I do a fair amount of um, quite a few different challenges, yeah. uh, whether they be running, cycling challenges, usually right. for charity, but okay. uh, but actually also for myself, because I yeah. think it. You know, when you're training for something and you put a lot of hard work and determination to achieving that goal, it doesn't make you feel good. Makes right? you feel good. It yeah. Does, yeah. Um, yeah. And I quite often say that the hour it takes to exercise each day is as hard and as difficult as it is at the time. Mm-hmm. It makes those other 23 hours yes. a bit better. Totally. So I think it's, uh, I think it's really important. I'd encourage anybody to, to to do that exercise. And there's lots of, uh, lots of reports and. Uh, at the moment, out in the moment, in the press about uh, the, the how good exercise is for you against against many cancers. Yeah, you know, and I think uh, if if that's not a reason enough to uh, yeah. to, to do it, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, something I'm a, a massive fan of uh, of, of exercise. Yeah, I, I just think it's uh, which one you prefer, like cycling? Or? Um, probably running running yeah yeah running or just sort of PT sessions in the gym so okay you know, multiple multiple disciplines okay um, so um, your business um, Holy and Monster um, I've seen on your website is it is it your dad started this or you get you started yeah, together well, sort, of, sort of together um, my father was made redundant <coughs> in 1991 from okay. his previous employment I had a job at the time I mm-hmm. just finished my my apprenticeship and he uh, he obviously was uh, he was re- made redundant. He had so he had some capital to uh, to to start, and I encouraged him to start a business. Up. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. And and Hollywood Science was the uh, was the company that that was started. So whilst I didn't join him for the first couple of months, I was very much part of the. You did, yeah, you were you there. Know, the uh, the idea, mm-hmm. uh, and and he started it up, and I was working with him at weekends and, and right. at night times, you know, sort of generally helping out. Yeah. But he took a natural role in sort of making the, the product okay. and I took a natural role as being sort of the office based okay. um, running the things doing all the office side you know the, the quotations the invoicing the sales side of things yeah know? so I mean, we're we're a perfect a perfect team really yeah. in that in that regard because we're very much you know what he didn't do I did you know yeah and, okay. uh, and they both complimented each other why why uh, why starting a, a, a signage company? What would you say? Uh, well, like? he was he was involved in the industry at the time oh, yeah. uh, on the periphery, but working for a construction company. Okay. So, it was sort of a natural yeah. a natural progression. And when he was made redundant, they offered him the the contract for doing their signage. So okay, um, that makes sense. So we started on. off with one client. And, okay. You know which. You know, anybody who's starting up a business without a client is very brave. Very uh, difficult. Actually, having one client. Was a was a great uh, was a great foundation. Fantastic. So, um, wh- how was the the beginning? Um, was it um, quite a slow slow start, or with, you know rapid growth? What did um, you experience? No, I think I think that we started to grow when we started to take employees on. But of course, yeah. that was a massive gamble. Um, yeah. And it certainly, I certainly remember it now to today. Um, yeah. You know, twenty five years on, employing our first person was around about twenty two years ago. So we went the first three years without employing anybody. Yeah. Um, and a few casual staff, but nobody permanent. Okay. So it was a it was a it was a huge gamble, mm-hmm. uh, sort of a leap of faith. Yeah. In order to 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 employ those people, but so the first three years was literally, um, you know, we were building a little bit of wealth into the business yeah. you know, to give us ourselves the, the the sort of the affordability. Yeah. Um, we kept our outgoings very low. Um, yeah. So it was just a very slow. It was quite a slow yeah. start. Uh, but, but also building up in terms of clients, you know, clientele. Yeah. Um, so and, and also it was on the back of the recession as well, early nineties. Oh yeah. So there was a recession then. Um, so it wasn't a you know it wasn't a huge uh, yeah. huge huge growth. Okay. And when um, when did you start to think? Um, well, I'm onto a winner here, and the start things started to like pick up for for you for you guys. I think. Already touched on it when we first started employing people. Yeah, I think that was when it made, it made us realise um, yeah, actually you can't keep working long hours yourself. You've yeah. got to start delegating and and and, and utilising those people. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's only so many hours in the day. And I think that was when it made me realise actually get more people on board that allow me to go and do what I'm good at. Yeah, and use yeah. them to their skill sets and uh, and build a team. And an offering around those. Fantastic. Um, 
um, many experts say that um, you have to become friends with your, with, your, um, with your clients and help solve their problems. I mean, our system is very big on um, satisfaction, customer satisfaction. Is there something that, that was really there from the beginning? Um, well, like I say, if you look after your staff, your yeah. staff will look after your clients. And I know I'm a really big believer that your clients, you know, if you're not going to look after them, they'll walk. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the biggest reasons why clients do move on. It's not usually down to price, it's usually down to how you make them feel. The relationship that you yeah. have. Yeah, so, you know, and we're, we're you know, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes mistakes. Uh, the famous saying, that's why they put bumpers on cars, because people do make mistakes. So <laughs> you, as long as you accept that. Mm -hmm. But what's the most important thing is how you deal with it. Yeah. Now, if you make the client feel that you just don't care, mm -hmm. you know, they'll walk. Yeah, of course. Customer satisfaction for me, it's embedded in with, with into all our staff. You know, if they want to be part of the Hollywood Monster family, they've got to. You know, that value has got to be really high on their agenda as well. So, what, what do you do? I mean, uh, do you like uh, send out um, newsletters to your client, or you get in touch with them um, on a regular basis and just um, to say hi? Or yeah. how, how do you how do you do I that? Think, uh, I think actually keeping in touch with the clients mm -hmm. is it is a challenge because you know people don't want to just sit and read your newsletters they're busy people yes you know, so, uh, and and just real sort of small t talk over the telephone again is yeah you know, they're too they're too busy too for busy, them. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we, we spend quite a lot of money in our marketing mm -hmm. you know, and we, we do market our product and market what we do mm -hmm. through whether it be through social media or, or direct right, yeah. marketing okay. and newsletters and so we, you know we, we do our best but we've also got CRM managers that are actually their role is to actually phone clients up to ask them if we can help them with anything okay any issues that they need for sorting or helping or advice on um, so you know so it's a bit of a mix I yeah. think really if you if you use all your channels rather than just one type of channel yeah then it becomes less salesy it becomes more um, you know making sure that you I mean yeah you're right I think you, if, you, if you can bring value to your customers first and then maybe um, tell them a bit, a bit more about your business usually you know you can't go wrong but as you said you know you have to have many pillars to grow your business yeah, you, right? do. you do yeah and I think the communication side Marketing, most, no, I should say most people, lots of people forget the value of marketing. Yeah. It's one of the very first things that gets turned off in any yeah. downturn or in any recession. Mm -hmm. But really, it's, it's, it's actually one of the things that should stay yeah. you know, uh, at, the top of the, at the top of the tree um, mm -hmm. during a downturn or in a, cli a, a quiet spell. Um, how about um, email marketing? Uh, do you use um, like automation email marketing uh, software? Yeah, you know? uh, it's not automated, right. um, but we, you know, we, we use you know uh, products that help us get you know, whether it be a you know, sort of like a Mailchimp type. Yes, um, yes, yes. Interesting. Um, you know, sort of email marketing. We do uh, social media auto posting as well. Yeah, you know, to talk about what we what. With all sorts of different stuff that we've done, right. load up photos or send them out at a certain time. Yeah, um, but, but but in terms of automation, it, it's really when you start doing things automa automated, I think you lose your personality in your business mm. as well. So you've got to do yeah. sort of off the cuff, you know, um, talk about, tweet about, Facebook about jobs yeah. uh, that you, that we've done that we've completed. Talk about our success stories. Um, talk about uh, answers to problems you know mm -hmm. some people might think oh yeah that's a, that, that will so be a solution to my problem yeah. you know and, ra and rather than just doing carte blanche you know standard yeah uh, posts I think um, I think that's when you start to turn your clients off yeah I mean yeah I think um, I mean what I, what I was referring to automation is um, for me it's for the leads that comes to my website you know they leave me my email and they're interested but then you know you have to follow up with them, and sometimes you forget, or sometimes you know people forget about you. So that's why I've trying to put a place a system that I've re wrote about three or six emails. I would come there like once a month yeah. just yeah. to remind me, yeah. uh, not just telling them about what I do, but just give them some advice or what I've seen that could help their business. And uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's quite successful because you do forget, and um, and automation is definitely a, a way to leverage you know yeah. those those leads that, yeah, that come yeah, through totally. the website, right? Totally. Um, so what will be more the key to make a business successful um, to you I mean obviously you have to improve your game you have to test stuff and I'm guessing you do a lot of testing um, when you send uh, for example um, 
email out or um, any kind of advertisement that you're going to do? Do you do like a, a setting, a test for like the, the the title, and then and then see what which one works best, or do you do any of that? Um, well, customer research, client satisfaction mm -hmm. uh, testing is something that we do. Right. Um, so we we always wanted to get feedback from our clients. Mm -hmm. I think that's Very important, really right? really important because again, it's more important what's most important thing is what they think rather than yes. what we think they think yeah yeah, yeah that's true yeah. Uh, you know and there's quite often a, a massive difference between that so um, I think that is that is a really important uh, yeah. lesson to, to, to be learned um, <coughs> and as you mentioned earlier um, you know, I think somebody needs to be a leader right and needs to have the vision for the business and uh, and get, a, get everybody all your team on board and how, how, how do you how do you do that with your team do you, do you meet uh, and Leading by example is one. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, demonstrating to your staff, you know, how you'd like your staff to to, to, to behave. Yeah. I think, you know, I think if the leader doesn't really care, mm -hmm. I think that then obviously it, it, gets full away, yeah. it uh, disperses right throughout the team. So, yeah. first and foremost, I think, uh, and hard work, hard work, determination, have a goal, have a passion for what you do. Yeah. Um, and, and, and people will will, um, will aspire to that and, and, and actually copy that yeah. and I think that's really important and right. again you know that's something that I I think you know I, I don't believe I've reached where we want to reach yet you know, okay. in terms of success so we're still learning and I'm certainly still learning um, but I think one of the things that I have learned along the route is really lead by how you want to be led and speak yeah. to people and treat people how you want to be treated okay great um, what successful means to you? I mean, I used to think that it was about just money, but uh, I know now it's not just about money. It's about yeah, well, I think no. going back to that book, Who Moved My Cheese, it's about, you know, it depends on what it is that, you know, what, what I say yeah. um, is success may not be somebody else's success. True. So it's really down to how you feel and what's in here. But I think in terms of me, my how I feel at the moment, my success is, you know, work-life balance for one. Yeah. Uh, to have time to do stuff for myself yeah. uh, and my family mm -hmm. and my friends and you know and I think that's really important that's what gives me a drive because yeah. when you're at the top of the business you've got nobody to report to so yeah. you've got to have some internal drivers that sort of make you get out of bed in the morning and go and, go and do that um, I think when I first started money was a massive driver for me right I was very much you know focused on the on the uh, yeah. on the pound um, <laughs> I would say I'm less so focus on the power now yeah. I think when you get older you realise actually there's a bit more to life than just money, get money yeah. um, you know and, and actually the, the, the richness of the life is, is what's really important right. so I think um, you know I think that's how I measure success mm -hmm. um, but I want I mean money does help you enjoy it does yeah. uh, the better things in life because mm -hmm. without that you can't have it yeah. but um, yeah, and, and I want you know the the holiday home abroad, the the bigger boats, the you know yeah. all the things that, and the, the bigger holidays and the longer holidays, yeah. you know that's all costs money. Yes. Uh, so without money, you can't have those. You uh, should be ashamed to to want these things, right? No, no, not at all. Yeah, not exactly. Because yeah. sometimes, sometimes when you mention this, people think you're greedy or anything, but it's like, well, uh, I think it's better to have um, to want things than not, yeah. right? Yeah, so. too right. But it's it's it has to be what you want. Yeah. You know? The next person may not want the holiday mm -hmm. home abroad. Yeah, they actually might want a home in Cornwall. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you know what what each individual targets, results, goals are. But it's what's really important is that you you set out and put the plans in place in order to achieve them. Okay. Um, any regrets? Um, you you would have done something differently today? No, not really. No, don't think so. Um, yeah. Maybe support a different football team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, on, uh, I think <laughs> no, no regrets at all. Certainly in the business world, no regrets. Yeah, uh, I think we've, uh, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Yes, yeah, so you learn from that. But you learn from them, and it's actually how you get back on track. Yeah, and yeah. you know, I think you, I think you're dead right. It is about uh, about all those lessons in in life, in business, you know, yeah. and, and which make sure you don't make the same mistakes again. If you don't fail, you don't, you're not trying anything, or yeah. better somewhere. So uh, you know, I think yeah. it's it's good. Um, 
obviously I just asked you, but um, you obviously know, I've, I've, you've achieved what you wanted, but you're still uh, angry, hungry for more, right? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, legacy, um, what would you like to leave behind? Um, so, give, well, please. I mean, there's, there's the, the various different um, organisations that I'm involved in. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Love Brum, which <coughs> we've not really spoke about, but yeah. it's a charity that platform smaller charities in the city. Okay. Uh, charities that are, or charities or projects that are going about their daily business in, in, in the city of Birmingham mm -hmm. that makes the city a better place. Right. Though unfortunately a lot of these um, projects are underfunded, run by volunteers. Right. Um, you know, they need the link to corp the corporate world, they need the exposure, they need money at the end of the day in order to mm -hmm. deliver their service and then Lubrum actually does that. Uh, for, for them um, and, and I think what I'd like to see in terms of Love Brum yep. is actually leaving you know a, lo a lot of projects we do we're showcasing f over 50 per year okay. I'd want to leave behind you know all these different projects with a, with a better foundation right. and, and, and allow them to move on into better things and to increase what their service offering so I think from, from that point of view that's what I'd like to leave behind um, you know, and, and, and people will also remember me for what I've done well, know, on the charitable side uh, in terms of my business you know, we employ 75 people here at the moment right. um, that's likely to increase yeah. um, you know, there's 70 families that are, you know, that are needing Hollywood Monster to prosper and to, and to, to expand mm -hmm. you know, and I hope to think that you know, the work that we've done over the years with their help as well mm -hmm. you know, that we leave, we leave a uh, you know, an organisation prosper, I guess, in the future. That's right. right that, yeah. that allows their families to to enjoy what they want. That's awesome. Maybe something something to be proud of, yeah. Yeah. Um, what would you say to uh, a young entrepreneur or, uh, that wants to start a business um, similar to yours today? What would you say as a as advice? Um, follow your dream. Yeah. Uh, make sure it is your dream, not a dream that you're trying to. You have to have the passion. You have to be your. You know, there's, there's a, there's going to be a time where you're thinking, you know, this isn't working. Mm -hmm. I'm having to work over the weekend where I'm wanting to be out with, the, with friends or family. Yeah, you're gonna have to dedicate you know, you're your time to, to it, right? You're gonna have to, uh, give up the stuff that you really like doing mm -hmm. on occasion. Um, so in order to, to have that dream, if it's going to be realised, it has to be something that you're really passionate about. Yeah. Um, and I think hard work, mm -hmm. determination. Uh, I mean, there's lots, lots of uh, lots of advice, not not in a two minute sort of answer, really. Yeah, but, yeah. but listen to other people, mm -hmm. uh, get get mentors that can help you along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, parts of of my life where I've had mentors on board, I've, I've, I've <coughs> actually learned such a lot. Yeah. You know, and quite often the mistakes or the or the decisions that I was faced with, they faced them. Many many times before, so you can help them now. They can help me get through, yeah. or they help me get through that decision making process. So I think it's, I think it's really important uh, to surround yourself with good people, yeah. uh, and obviously, good members of staff as well. Make sure you're hiring the right people for yeah. the right jobs. Mm. No square pegs in round holes. Uh, make sure you get the right team, uh, and delegate and use them and yeah. uh, and allow them to prosper because that's what motivates them too you know to feel that they are trusted mm -hmm. I think that's really important uh, but there isn't just one single yeah. a bit of advice that I can yeah. give uh, but I think be open minded open minded uh, yeah. listen to other people's opinions yeah. get your clients feedback act on it um, mm -hmm. uh, but again it all comes back down to that passion and that drive yeah. you need to have that to, to start with uh, and of course a good idea yeah um, hasn't necessarily got to be a new idea. Yeah, but you've got to do something slightly different and slightly better than, than somebody else. Else, else. Yeah. Uh, else, you're not going to uh, you're not going to survive. <laughs> and you, I mean, for for example, we mentioned about failures. Um, I mean, at some point you might have started a business, it might not be working. At some point, you need to get, not give up, but kind of let it go and then start something else. I mean, well, where would you say that um, you know when something's not working and you have to just like. Because sometimes business can take yeah, years yeah. to grow, right? Yeah. I think you let it go when you lose the passion. Yeah. Again, it comes back down to the same thing. Um, but if the feedback you're getting and everybody's telling you that it's not working or 
it's not right, then listen to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it may not mean you may not mean just letting it go, but maybe change the offering slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because uh, there's no point uh, trying to sell snow to the Eskimos, so yeah. to speak. That is true. Uh, where can we find uh, more about you? I mean, you mentioned the charity. So, um, is there a Twitter feed for, for the charity Love Brum? Uh, uh, there is. Yeah, it's uh, Love Brum UK. I see. Yeah, uh, is the uh, is the is the Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on Facebook as well. Yeah. Uh, Birmingham City Ladies is on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Um, BCLFC on Twitter. Right. Um, and my personal Twitter channel is Tim John Andrews. Tim John Andrews. Yeah, okay. and also on Facebook as well. Yeah, and uh, I'm guessing uh, Hollywood um, site, Hollywood Monster is the uh, website. It's, yeah, Hollywoodmonster.co.uk is the is the website. Fantastic. And, uh, and again, we're uh, we're on Twitter and Facebook too. Right, Tim. Uh, um, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Right. Um, thanks for taking part today, and uh, I um, yeah, I'm, I'm very very thankful thank you, thankful to have you. Uh, taking part on yeah, this. Yeah, it's no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez. Thank you for coming, uh, listening, or watching uh, the show. Please uh, get all of me if you are a successful uh, businessman or entrepreneur at Didier at the drone film company.com. Uh, the podcast on iTunes, just at my name, Didier Soulier, D I D I E R S O U L I E R. If you ever watch the video, it's uh, on YouTube at my account, which is uh, Didier Soulier. Thank you guys for coming and I'll see you next time.